I've got a few cases that I'm going to go through with you. Um, there are a few questions to uh, uh, to answer as we go through. So uh, uh, keep keep alert and uh, uh, and um, uh, come in and do those questions because once you're committed, you're more likely to learn something than if you just think, well, I probably knew that uh, anyway. So you've got to commit yourself on some of these uh, questions. So the first question is, a, uh, first case rather, is a Cairn Terrier, one-year-old female in tire called Clara. And Clara uh, was presented um, two days prior to referral with lethargy and scleral hemorrhage. Uh, she was taken to her primary vet um, who suspected uh, rodenticide intoxication, treated her with vitamin K. The owners, though, declined further investigation to confirm rodenticide uh, intoxication. And uh, uh, to cut a sh story short, there was a progressive deterioration over the next few days, and then she was referred. So when she was referred uh, on clinical examination, she had bilateral scleral hemorrhages that you can see in those pictures below, petechiation and echemotic hemorrhages uh, that the more you clipped her hair, the more you found out, particularly over her ventral abdomen and lateral aspect of her thorax. Routine uh, hematology and biochemistry was... Uh, um, the biochemistry was fairly unremarkable. Hematology showed that there was a uh, moderate to neutrophilia of 36.8, a lymphocytosis, a monocytosis, and a moderate anemia with a PCV of 0.22. Thrombocytopenia was also present at 48 times 10 to the 9th, which is um, in the area where uh, uh, you might expect some enhanced bleeding, but not usually spontaneous uh, bleeding associated with just the deficiency of platelets. Because of the low um, platelet count, she was uh, uh, a coagulation profile was performed. Uh, this was basically unremarkable, but the fibrinogen was noted to be low. D-dimers were mildly increased, suggesting early disseminated intravascular coagulation. So in her investigation, we wanted to know really whether there was any evidence of uh, internal uh, bleeding. So she had uh, chest and abdominal radiographs and um, an, an ultrasound examination of her abdomen. And I'm going to show you the uh, chest radiographs. So this is the right lateral chest radiograph from uh, Clara. This is the left lateral, and we know that it's the left lateral because the left crust of the diaphragm has moved uh, cranially uh, and has the gas filled fundus just behind it. Remember the lower um, uh, uh, recumbent area of the uh, abdomen is the area that will push on the diaphragm, moving that um, uh, crura forwards. Dorsal ventral was taken in addition. Uh, and uh, this is the dorsoventral radiograph. So I'm going to ask you what um, lung pattern predominates. I'll just go back through those uh, uh, radiographs. Uh, there's the uh, dorsoventral. There's the left lateral. And there's the right lateral. So just look through those and decide what is the predominant pulmonary pattern? Is it bronchial? Is it vascular? Is it a localized alveolar pattern, a nodular interstitial pattern, or an unstructured interstitial pattern? So, um, Whichever you chose, uh, the right answer is actually a vascular pattern. Uh, and that's a fairly unusual pattern, but one that is uh, quite important both for cardiac disease uh, and for uh, some uh, respiratory diseases. And if we look at the cranial lung lobes in the right lateral, here you can see above the bronchus is the cranial lobe artery. Below the bronchus is the cranial lobe vein. And it's really the artery that is much more prominent than normal, and it extends right out to the periphery. Normally, it should taper down 
to quite a small diameter by the time it gets towards the periphery uh, of the, uh, the lung. So uh, we can see that the uh, um, pulmonary uh, arteries uh, are enlarged. And yet some of them seem to be truncated. So here's a pulmonary artery that's coming down on the other cranial lung lobe, uh, and it seems to abruptly stop uh, towards the uh, periphery. We look in the caudal uh, area, again, we can see that the arteries are above the bronchus, um, the veins are below the bronchus, and the arteries are much more prominent uh, than the uh, pulmonary veins as they go out into the lungs. And again, there's some increased opacity around uh, those uh, vessels. Some of that's giving a rather interstitial pattern towards the underneath but it's all really associated mostly uh, with the uh, uh, vascular pattern. And when you see uh, end on, you can see that there are round uh, tubes going uh, through the three-dimensional structure. So definitely a vascular pattern. On the left lateral, again, we can see that there's uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, vascular pattern coming right the way down towards the periphery maybe even a little bit of an air bronchogram down here because there might be some uh, uh, fluid within the alveoli um, very distally, but really still quite a prominent um, arterial uh, pattern compared to the venous pattern. And on the dorsoventral, again, uh, we can see these uh, arteries, the arteries on the dorsoventral are lateral to the uh, uh, bronchus, the veins are medial to the bronchus, so this is a pulmonary artery coming into the right uh, caudal lobe, and again you can see that it's quite prominent. All the radiographs that I show you in the dorsoventral or ventrodorsal projection uh, will have the right-hand side of the body to the left-hand side of the screen, and it's always good to look at images the same way round as with the uh, laterals where the head will be to the left uh, hand side of your screen and the tail will be to the right hand side of your screen. Well, those of you who uh, realised that it was a vascular pattern probably thought what could the cause be when there's uh, changes just within the pulmonary artery. And, and really that would be that there is the possibility of uh, heartworm disease, which in the UK would tend to be Angiostrongylus vasorum, and indeed uh, Calara was positive for the Angular strongum, uh, Strongylus vasorum antigen test. Uh, she was also positive um, by the fecal, fecal uh, Beerman test, uh, and the uh, um, larvae could be seen, and they have a very typical uh, little hook on the end of their tail, which uh, means that you can identify them uh, quite uh, clearly. I just thought it was worthwhile talking about why you get that abrupt change to the, uh, uh, to the uh, arteries, and that's because there's uh, thromboembolic disease occurring with the uh, parasite. And this is a five-year-old Bernese mountain dog that was negative on the antigen test, was negative on the uh, faecal uh, 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 Beerman test and also on a, a bronchoalveolar lavage. But what we could see was the arteries came down and abruptly terminated. Now, uh, this dog was actually treated um, for angiostrongylus because we were concerned about that, but uh, she had a massive thromboembolic uh, shower and actually died. And a post mortem, we confirmed uh, that there were. Uh, 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 larvae present within those uh, um, uh, thrombi. So don't be put off uh, by a negative um, antigen test or even a negative uh, Beerman's test on faecal or on bronchoalveolar vage. Um, you should still, if you suspect, uh, treat these animals with a suitable parasiticide. Are you a vet or a nurse, vet nurse or a veterinary student or a veterinary nurse student? If you're any of those things, then please do go over and look at our 
uh, platform, thewebinarvet.com, and Wikivet as well. Some great resources on there. Join the very big community that we have on the platform, and we'd love to see you on a webinar or looking at some of the great student resources on the Wikivet website.